Hi everyone, I'm Leah, your lead course instructor here at Advanced E-Clinical Training. I'm sure you know me by now as we've been going through these anatomy and physiology lessons and we're getting near the end. So uh, today um, we are going to talk about the urinary system. All right, so Functions of the urinary system include filtration, so every day the kidneys filter gallons of fluid from the bloodstream. There's water processing, so the kidneys process filtrate from the urine, allowing waste to leave the body in urine while returning required substances to the blood. There's also elimination, so the kidneys are responsible also for eliminating uh, nitro um, gases waste toxins and drugs from the body. Regulation, uh, the kidneys also help to regulate the blood's volume and chemistry so that the proper balance between water and salts and between acids and bases is maintained. And then other regulatory functions include um, the kidneys help to produce the enzyme renin and to help regulate blood pressure and their hormone um, erythropoietin that helps to stimulate red blood cell production in the bone marrow. Organs of the urinary system include, of course, the kidneys. So the kidneys alone perform the functions just described and manufacture urine in the process. So while the other organs of the, the urinary system provide temporary storage reservoirs for urine or serve as transportation channels uh, to carry it from the body to another region of the body. So the urinary system um, includes, of course, you have two kidneys, you have two ureter tubes on both the right and left side, um, you have a urinary bladder, and then the urethra. So here we have the kidneys. So the kidneys are located against the back of the body wall in a, a retroperitoneal retroperitoneal position um, in the uh, superior lumbar region. So they extend from T12 or thoracic 12 to lumbar 3 of your vertebrae. And the lower part of the rib cage um, serves as protection to the kidneys. So the adult kidney is about 12 centimeters or 5 inches long and 6 centimeters or 2.5 uh, two inches wide. Um, and it is about three centimeters thick, and it's about the size of a large bar of soap. So you have two adrenal glands, and um, we talked about the adrenal glands in the endocrine system, but sitting on top of each kidney on the right and left side is the adrenal gland. Um, and so, uh, as I said before, this is part of the endocrine system, which we talked about. Um, and the endocrine lesson um, and is actually a, a totally separate and distinct separate organ functionally. It just happens to live on top of the kidneys. <laughs> um, there is the fibrous capsule. So the fibrous capsule of the kidney is a transparent um, capsule that includes, encloses each kidney. Um, you have the renal fascia. So the renal fascia is the outermost capsule of the kidney and helps to anchor the kidney by holding it in place against the muscles of the trunk, um, the trunk wall. Then we have the renal cortex. And you can see all of these structures here in this diagram. So the renal cortex is the outer region, which is light in color. And then you have the renal medulla. And so superior to the cortex is a darker uh, reddish brown area known as the renal medulla. So then we have renal columns. Renal columns are they're pyramids that are separated by um, so pyramids are pyramids of the kidney. Excuse me, are separated by extensions of cortex-like tissue called renal columns. Then you have the renal pelvis and medial to the hilum is the renal pelvis um, and that runs with the ureter leaving the hilum. 
we have um, the calluses and these extensions of the pelvis form a cup-shaped area that enclose the tips of the pyramids and collect urine. And these uh, calluses continually drain from the tips of the pyramids into the renal pelvis. And then we have the renal artery and um, the renal artery uh, is the arterial supply to each kidney, um, one on the right and the left and which divides into segmental arteries um, as it approaches the hilum. So moving on to nephrons. So nephrons are very, very important to the urinary system and to the kidneys. So nephrons, so each kidney contains over 1 million nephrons responsible solely for forming urine. So you have the glomerulus and one of the main structures of the nephron is the glomerulus and it is a knot of capillaries. You also have the renal tubule. One of the main structures in a nephron is this renal tubule. So you can see all of these structures that I'm speaking about right here in this diagram. So there it's the Bowman's capsule. Um, and this is also known as the glomerular and it surrounds the glomerulus. You have foot processes or pedocytes they have the, um, which have long branching processes called foot processes that intertwine with one another and cling to the glomerulus. There's the collecting duct of each nephron. And so a collecting tubule called the collecting duct receives urine from many nephrons. The loop of Henle. The loop of Henle is the hairpin loop following the proximal um, convoluted tubule. So you can see that right here. And then you also have the distal convoluted tubule. And so after the loop of Henle, the tubule continues to coil and twist, as you can see here, before the collecting duct. And, is, um, and this part is called the distal convoluted tubule. Moving on to the ureter. So as I said before, you have a kidney on the right side, a kidney on the left side, and then you have ureter tubes, one from each kidney that extends from the kidney to the bladder. So really the ureter's uh, active role is for urine transport. The ureters are two slender tubes, each 25 to 30 centimeters long and six millimeters in diameter. Each ureter tube runs behind the peritoneum from the renal hilum to the bladder, entering it at a slight angle. And so the function of the ureters again acts as a passageway transporting urine from the kidneys to the bladder, propelling the urine into the bladder by peristalsis. And we talked a lot about peristalsis in our last lesson in gastro in our gastro lesson. So we shall know what that is by now. But the urine is um, also prevented from flowing back by a small valve-like folds of the bladder mucosa that flap over the ureter openings right about here. Moving on to the bladder. So the bladder is a smooth, collapsible, muscular sac that temporarily stores urine. It is located retroperitoneally in the pelvis just behind the symphys pubis. Um, there, the smooth triangular region of the bladder base outlined um, by these three openings is called the trigone, which, where infections definitely tend per to persist, which would be like right around here. Um, and then you have the uh, detriso muscle and this bladder wall contains three layers of smooth muscle known as the detrusor muscle and its mucosa is made um, of transitional epithelium cells. So the urethra. So the urethra is a thin wall tube that carries urine by peristalsis from the bladder to the outside of the body. So there's the internal urethral sphincter 
and this is an involuntary sphincter that keeps the urethra closed when the urine is not being passed. Then there is the external urethral sphincter, um, which passes through the pelvic floor, and this is the sphincter that is voluntarily controlled. So this is the sphincter that allows you to hold your urine when you have to go to the bathroom. The female urethra is about three to four centimeters long and its opening lies anteriorly to the vaginal opening. The male urethra um, is obviously longer and it's approximately 12, or I'm sorry, 20 centimeters long and has three named regions, um, the prostatic, the membranous, and the spongy. And it opens to the tip of the penis where the urine is released. So obviously in the urinary system, it's important to discuss urine formation. So urine formation is the result of three processes known as glomerular filtration. So water and solutes are pushed through the capillary walls and pores of the glomerular capsule into the renal tubule. The tubular reabsorption happens, so water, glucose, amino acids, and ions are transported out of the filtrate into the tubule cells and into the capillary blood. And then you have tubular secretion, so hydrogen, potassium, creatinine, and drugs are removed from the uh, paratubular blood and secreted by these tubular cells into filtrate. So you can see it's filtrate, reabsorption, secretion, and then excretion. So characteristics of urine, in 24 hours, the kidneys filter approximately 150 to 180 liters of blood plasma through their glomeruli into the tubules. In 24 hours, only about 1.0 to 1.8 liters of urine is produced. So urine contains nitrogenous waste and unneeded substances, of course, the color of urine, freshly voided urine, should be clear and pale to deep yellow in a healthy individual. Now, of course, in healthcare, we don't always see healthy individuals. You know, um, if somebody has a urinary tract infection, um, a lot of times the urine is cloudy or it's malodorous or, um, uh, you know, a kid, and if somebody is dehydrated, usually the urine is a lot darker and more concentrated. Of course, when urine is formed, um, it's mild smelling, but if it, it is allowed to sit, it produces an ammonia odor. And that's caused by bacteria um, on those urine solutes. So the pH of urine is usually acidic, um, around six on this scale, but changes with body metabolism. So also certain foods may cause urine to be much more acidic or more base more basic as well. The specific gravity of urine usually ranges from 1.001 to 1.035. And solutes found in urine include sodium, potassium ions, urea, uric acid, creatinine, ammonia, bicarbonate ions, and various other ions as well. So moving on to micturition, and, and so this is um, actually voiding, it's the act of emptying the bladder. You have the accumulation and the bladder will continue co to collect urine until it's about 200 mLs have accumulated. Then there is activation. At this point, stretching of the bladder wall activates the stretch receptors. Then you have transmission. So um, impulses transmitted to the sacral region of the spinal cord and then back to the bladder via this uh, pelvic splenic nerves cause the bladder to go into reflex contractions. And then you have the passage of urine. Um, so as the contractions become stronger in the bladder, urine is forced past the internal urethral sphincter into the upper part of the urethra. And then the external sphincter which we just talked about uh, because controlled 